This is a quick tutorial about how to use Twine to create a text-based adventure. I use Twine a lot when I'm teaching. I think it's a fun, different way for students to combine their knowledge of a subject with um, some really, really basic coding. I mean, it, it is simple, and I'm going to show you how simple it is. You just have to go to twinery.org. It'll bring you to this page that you're seeing right now on the screen. And you can just click use in your browser and the kids can do this as well. You can see I've created a whole bunch of different, they call them stories here. And I'm just gonna show you really easily how to do this and show you a couple of tricks that make it really simple for your students. And then when you're done, you can just export it as an H HTML file. If you don't know what that is, it's not a big deal. You know, you can double click on it in your computer and it'll open up whatever the story is from the user standpoint, um, from whatever your students created. So here's how you do it. So you go up here, yours will be blank if you log in for the first time. You go here where it says plus new. And so we're gonna add a story. I'm just gonna title it um, example. All right, so I'm gonna do example, hit enter. So this is the basic page here. Um, you start with these passages and it's gonna create and populate more passages here as I create them in just a moment. Your basic toolbar allows you to add new passages up here, but I'm gonna show you an easier way to do it and to rename passages. You might wanna do that for a specific reason we'll get to later. The most important button that's up here for you is gonna be test from here, which I'm gonna come back to in a moment. So let's go to our first passage here. I'm gonna double click on it. And I always, right here, it's down here in a second. I always rename mine, just start. It's just easiest so that I always know where my start page is. This is actually going to be a holding place. And I'll get into that more in a minute, but it, I'm gonna show you how you use this to set variables. But for right now, we're not going to do that because for right now, all we want to do is get our user started in our text-based game. To do that, we use double brackets. So one, two, two brackets. And we're just gonna type begin game. I'm gonna do two new brackets. Now, as soon as I do this, you're gonna notice on the left, another one of those blue boxes is gonna pop up, okay? So there it is, right down here, and I'll drag it down here. So what that did was that created an option for the user. Let's go back and let me show you what it looks like from their standpoint. So if I go back here to the start, I clicked on it, and I did test from here, okay? This is what the user would see when they create the game. Anything that's in blue is something that they can click on. That's the option. It's like a choose your own adventure game. So you can have different places that the characters can move and so on and so forth. I have taught a lot of American history. So I oftentimes have my students base them off of some American history event just so I can test their knowledge. Let's get out of this. So we're gonna go back here. Okay, now we did our begin game. Let's give our users some idea of what we're doing. So uh, let's just do a simple maze. Any text that you type in is going to appear as is without an option. So we'll just say, you find yourself in the center of a giant maze, period. All right, let's close it. Let's go back here, let's test it again. It's gonna say begin game. You click on it and here's like the text that the user would see. Now let's give them some options about where they would want to go, all right? We're going to give them several different options. We're going to say double brackets, go straight. Double brackets, go right. Double brackets, go left. So now, and it there it goes, it just created all three. It's gonna spread them out so they're easier for me to see. And then if we go back, test from here, begin game, you find yourself in the center of a giant maze. And you can go one of three directions, all right? So that's what we've got so far. So, and, and you can just keep building this out. If that's all you wanna do, that's totally fine. You can just create different options. The user can move back and forth, no biggie. Um, and sometimes I'll have students that'll just do that and it still looks really nice. The other thing that we can do, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you two different options, okay? Um, first, I'm gonna show you how to hide a passage. 
these are all passages. This one is, this one is, this one is, I call them passages, all right? These are all passages. So I'm going to show you how to hide one. Here's what I mean by that. Let's go, just go right. You continue down the maze, all right? We're going to do two things with this. We're going to say, go straight. And what that's going to do, and you saw it immediately, I'll minimize it. See how it linked it to this one? So it's going to send the user back here. So basically what I'm doing is, if you think of a maze, I'm building like a series of loops so that I don't have to have quite as many passages. But we can do more interesting things from it than that, because let's say, let's say I want to go right again. Well, I don't want to have them just go back to the exact same passage. You can do that, but let's say I don't want to do that. I want to take them somewhere else. Here's how I do that. I'm going to write go right. So that's the text that is going to show up for the user. And then what you do is on the far right side of your keyboard, next to the backward slash, there's a straight up down, right? You put the straight up down in there, and then I'm just going to call this R1. Close it. Now let me minimize it here. So here, it popped up there. Now let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go here, test from here. So you'll see it says go right, even though the name of the passage, if I can get back up here, is called R1. That's super useful if you have like a death scene. So if there is a place that the, if the user goes this way, they're going to die. Well, you don't want to say like end game or something because then they're never going to click on that. But you can hide it by simply doing that up down mark, right? So that's, that's one thing that I wanted to show you that was a little bit different. I'm going to show you one other thing. And this one it gets a little bit more complicated because what you can do in this system is in addition, let me go back. Now we're back on our start page. And the reason that I had us set this up was because what we're going to do is we're going to set a variable. This system allows you to set variables and use variables in different ways. So let me show you how to do that in a really rudimentary way you use so instead of brackets, we're going to use a parenthetical and we're going to do set and it actually starts it for me. That's our command, all right? Variables in twine are used, are indicated rather with dollar signs. So I'm going to say dollar sign key, and I'll explain why I did that in a second, to one. All right, now you can use language in this if you want to. I could set it to yes if I put it in... Um, uh, parentheses, or I could set it to no. I, just because, you know, I did some coding um, when I was in school and it, we used numbers by and large. So I always use binary numbers, ones and zeros in order to classify my items. And that actually reminds me, I'm going to set this to zero. I'm not going to set this to one because zero would be the off position. One would be the on position. So that's, that's the way I do it. You don't have to do it that way, but that's the way that I do it. So now we've set our variable. So let me show you how this works. So let's say we went right over here and then we went right again, okay? So here's how we're gonna set an if then. So our variable is key, right? So I'm gonna do if variable key is one, then we do one parenthesis like this open door, okay? And then we close it like that. It'll actually get highlighted a little bit if you didn't notice, all right? Then here we'll do, I don't do, I could do if dollar sign key is zero, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do else because else is just an easier command to use for this. Because then if the, if the key is at one, it's gonna show open door. Otherwise it's gonna tell them there is a large door, but it is locked and you do not have the key. All right. Boom. So that's that's all we have to do here. So let's exit out of here. Um, let's just let's just go here. Let's just test it from here. Test from here. Okay, there's a large door, but it's locked and you do not have the key. Why don't we have the key? Well, because Key was set to zero at the beginning, right? Key got set to zero. So let's just test it from here, just for the sake of argument. 
We'll begin the game. We'll go right. We'll go right again. There's a large door, but we don't have the key because we set key to zero. And key has to be one in order for the open door passage to show up. So let's do it down here. Let's say that they went left instead. All right. You enter a room and find a golden key, which you take, all right? Then we go down here below and we, we're gonna set key to one, all right? So now once they go to this room, key is set to one. And then just to make this go a little bit faster, I could have them go tons of different directions from there, but I, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna say return, but um, I want them to go back to the begin game screen. So again, I'm gonna do up, down arrow, begin game. They've actually done a pretty nice job recently. When I first started using this, you really did have to type in everything. Now it will autofill some of it for you. So it makes it a little bit more user-friendly. Let's just also add, there is nothing else in the room. Okay, so now let's see how we got. Now let's give it a shot. Let's go back to our beginning. We're gonna test from here. We're gonna begin game. Um, I think it was go straight. Nope, it wasn't, uh, it was go left. So we entered a room, we found a golden key, which we take, there's nothing else in the room. Return, now we're gonna go right. We're gonna go right again. And now you see the open door shows up because when we went to the other room, our variable of key got set from zero to one. And once that happens, then we're able to use the item that we got. So you can you can do inventories, um, you can do all kinds of different things with this. I'll do further videos that explain how to do things like hit points if you want to uh, have a bad guy or something that your person's going to have to fight and so on and so forth. Um, but these, this is a really easy tool that I love to use because some kids get more into it than others, but it's a ton of fun to create just really basic stories and kind of gives them an entrance into coding, but also into the the concept of game creation, which I think a lot of times is actually more fun than the coding itself. So hopefully that's something that you can use and enjoy.